What's up everybody? Welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We're back today with the FlightScope Mevo Plus. That's the portable radar-based golf launch monitor that we've shown quite significantly in the channel. And today they've released the 0.19 firmware update. That's the DSP firmware. Now digital signal processing that is actually controlling things such as spin and putt tracking. And they've actually released some statements on their social media accounts, which you can check out, which they said they have shown improved accuracy in those different categories. Okay. Okay. So we're going to show it to you all today. We're going to do some chipping. We're going to do some iron shots, driver, and putting. So we'll dive right in in a minute. The only thing that I've noticed kind of with the Mevo Plus is my driver spin is probably a little bit higher than normal. And they supposedly are addressing that in this firmware update. So I'm excited to see that. Now, don't get me wrong. For a unit that MSRP is at $2,000, I think that the, the data is actually well within kind of a tolerance. But actually, it's been on sale quite significantly lately for only $1,799. It's on sale right now for $1,799. If you're interested in purchasing the unit, I strongly suggest you to shoot me an email. I'll make sure I get you a link over to my partners. Um, you're going to save on tax, shipping, make sure you're getting the lowest price along with all other in components that you might need, whether it be turf or mats or projectors. I want to make sure I help you guys out. So make sure you shoot me an email if you're interested in purchasing the unit, but let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. I have it set to sand wedge. We're going to go ahead and grab a 58 degree. I am using the dot on the ball today. I'm not using a Titleist RCT ball. I know people have been messing around with that a little bit, but they actually don't have their unit calibrated for that. So I don't think they're recommending it at this stage. So I want to give the unit its best opportunity with what they recommend. All right, as always in my studio, I'm actually not at the full eight feet. It's close, um, but I'm kind of at about seven and a half feet or so, and then I have a little over 10 feet of ball flight. So if you guys aren't familiar with the GSV studio, that's what we're at today. Um, so it's not the, the, the best distance from Evo Plus, but I've actually had it you know, operating quite well in the studio. So let's just go ahead and do a shorter chip for now. Just kind of something short to see what kind of reading we're getting. Looks like it read quite well. All right, picking up decent spin for a short chip. All right, that carried 50 feet. Let's go ahead and give it just a little bit longer. I do appreciate that the Mevo has a very short shot delay. I know a lot of people have talked about that in the past. Um, other benefit of Mevo Plus is it sits behind the golfers, so you can have a right or left-handed player without moving the unit. So a little benefit there. All right, we had a little increased spin. Let's go ahead and maybe we'll get this around 50 yards or so. Yeah, depending, that might be a little bit further. Kind of jumped at it just a little bit. Let's see where that lands. Not really that warmed up right now, but no, that was right on, 52. So a couple yards further. So I like what I'm seeing so far, uh, you know, as far as carry, my spin obviously has been a little bit higher as I'm increasing my club head speed with my wedges here. We'll get after this a little more. This is a hundred yard club, um, wide open. I don't usually hit it wide open. Like that was a full shot and it's a little short of a hundred it looks like, um, but I can get it to a hundred if I'm really jumping after it. So 93 yards. So that's a full shot for me um, with my 58 degree. Looks like I got a lot more spin out of it, 89.52. So I like what I'm seeing so far. Um, let's go ahead and just grab a nine iron. Hit a couple nine irons. And I think that wedge and iron for the most part, at least from I'm sure what you guys have seen in the channel here, uh, have been working well. So I'm just kind of showing you some demonstrations here, uh, making sure that everything is still on point from what we've seen in the past. Driver was an important one. Putting was an important one. The short shipping obviously is reading well. Well, that was a little thin pull there, but it looks like it read it quite well. So that's a good thing. See how the launch angle is a little bit lower there. Just not the best swing in the world, that's for sure. Got to get a little warmed up. Carry 140, which is pretty close. It obviously took off to the left, which I saw inside the studio. There we go. A little better. Obviously much better launch angle. A little bit to the left, a little more distance. My back actually has been hurting me. You know, it's funny. I injured my back a while ago. Um, couple years ago and for whatever reason it's just been uh, hurting me a little bit lately so 147 on that one uh, 6370 on spin let's hit one more I always find that the uh, e6 algorithm when I pull a ball has a little more distance 
than what I see on some other things, even if like I'm using FS Golf. And talking to users, try to straighten that ball out a little bit. Um, they see the same thing, just a little bit, a little bit further distance uh, if your ball gets pulled a little bit. Um, must be something to do with their, their flight algorithm. So notice how I didn't pull at that time, and that's like spot on for my nine iron. Um, it's like I almost got a couple extra yards or so. All right, well, why don't we hit a couple long irons? Um, try to not uh, get my back to act up on me a little bit. Yeah, it's just been interesting. It's been almost like a uh, little pain in uh, my, like the, t the left of my spine, which I'm sure about every golfer has dealt with before. It just comes and goes. All right. That was a pull. Looks like it's pretty darn close though, because if that's the 200, this usually carries 190 plus. 195 it can carry. 189, all right. I do select the club if you guys are, you know, uh, you haven't been watching Mevo Plus a lot in the channel. They recommend selecting the club. I think it might narrow its reading window, but they select, uh, you're supposed to select wedge, iron, or wood, or obviously putter. So I didn't really need to select nine iron to five iron. I just did. For data tracking, you would want to do that. Let's see if I can get this to not pull a little bit here. There we go. That was a pretty good shot. A little bit low on the club face, but should, should you know still get good distance. So looks like that one might be 185 to 88 or so. 190. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm seeing some really good distances right now. Um, let's go ahead and move to driver because I mean, we've done it all. We've done wedge, irons, some chipping. Pretty darn good results from what I'm seeing so far. I use Bertie's. I've had a lot of people ask about this lately. Um, Mario is the owner of this company. Um, known him for a little while and uh, just a really nice guy. Creates these tees that are just like almost disposable once they wear out. They last quite a while as long as you're not someone that like smashes the tee all the time. Um, they are like a molded plastic, but uh, they last a long time for me. Um, they're great because any type of turf you're working on, you just set it up wherever you want. Um, so a lot of people have asked that. So those are Bertie's. All right. Let's see if I can swing a driver here. Pretty decent drive. All right. Let's see what we got here. Man, if I could just swing like that every single time. I felt that kind of hit. It was low on the club face, but it was, uh, you know, struck really well. And it's funny because... Uh, look at the spin, 3,000. Now, when I first tested it, you know, uh, I was getting a lot of spin right in my normal window of around 2,000. And so I'm interested to see if I can continue to do that here in the demo. But notice the speed, notice the carry, okay? These are somewhat similar numbers that I'm sure you guys will see with other uh, launch monitors that I demonstrate in the channel. I like what I see so far. All right, tried to swing a little harder at that one. That was a little better contact on the ball. As you can see, I'm gonna get a little more distance out of it. Interested to see what the spin is on that one because it hit different on the face. There we go. Yep, I just hit a little more in the center area of the face and now I'm getting that lower spin that I'm used to, you know, that hovers around 2000. So, um, and then I got my total distance up to 271. So I like that. I know some people re were reporting a little bit shorter driver, but if your driver is spinning high, you're losing distance. So let's say you normally spun around 2200 and you weren't getting good spin readings. They were always high, 3500. Well, it's gonna take off quite a bit of distance. So um, I think that's something that they've addressed here that appears to be working quite well. That was a little different on the face too, so I'm interested. I'm trying to swing hard, get some uh, good, look at that. I'm pulling them as I swing harder. That's usually my miss when I try to swing hard. It'll be interesting to see what the data is on this. All right, 
spin was 2271. I got my ball speed up. I carried it 272, which I, you know, I, I, I'm very capable of carrying 272 on all kinds of different uh, launch monitors. I like what I'm seeing here. And it was funny because that first shot, I think was a high spinning ball. Um, you know, so uh, it's funny that it had it up at, you know, around 3000. Now I'm making better impacts and I'm getting around 2000. So I definitely pulled that one a little bit. It obviously had 800 left side spin. It took off a little bit to the left. Um, you guys are probably used to seeing my miss here in the studio. Well, guess what? That's it. Man, I really like what I'm seeing so far. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Please comment below. Are you using 0.19? Um, you know, let me know. Let's do some putting. Now, keep in mind, you do not putt with the dot on. So we're going to go practice, grab a ball. Let's do chip and putt. 20 foot flat area is always uh, a great one for me. I have Stimp on at 11. So it's interesting, my studio is like 10 and a half. I have a Stimp meter, I've done it a million times. It's not 10, it's not 11, it's always like 10.6 or so because you do the calculation on averages. And so you could say it's rolling in 11 because it's closer to 11 than 10. So I've been selecting uh, 11 lately. But understand that the optimal putting from Evo Plus is where you, and I've shown this set up here in the channel, is where you take a putting mat and put it off to the side and it allows it to roll smooth, all right? And it's level and it doesn't have any bouncing. Now, um, I can just kind of push this in before we get started here. And that way it's like not blocking or anything. Try to get this down low and I'll try to get it rolling smooth. It, 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 I mean, this is, I've been doing this a lot and it works quite well. Now, is this the optimal setup? No, but let's see how it does with this, you know, fair setup. 20 feet. Ooh, I might've hit that too hard. Yeah, that was a little hard to start off there for 11 stimp. <laughs> Blew it by like, like 10 feet. I knew that right when I hit it, that thing just took off. All right, let's slow it down a little bit here. Good to see that it picks up the, the kind of yip. All right. And that's probably a little short. No, I got there. So that actually was three feet past, so all right. That should be pretty darn good. Oh, I missed one. I think it missed it. So depending on, I'm sure you're watching my ball, depending on if I get bounce and things, it's potential that I might miss a putt um, versus when I have the mat down, I generally don't have any misses. Yeah, see that ball's bouncing quite bad, but and it, that was a little bit to the right. It had a little bit to the right. When my ball bounces, I, I definitely think it affects my speed. When it rolls really smooth, it uh, you know gives me more speed on the ball. So, what was that? That was pretty decent right there. All right, a little bit to the right. See if I can make a putt here. Still hitting it to the right. That was right to the right of my dot. I felt like that putt was spot on. All right, so let's just get the aim down a little bit here. All right. Getting the speed down. Of course, I hit a little bit to the left. It goes to the left. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that was about right here. <laughs> I just aimed too far to the left. I mean, I feel like the putting's actually performing quite well considering I'm using my rough mat and the ball's bouncing. Um, let's see here. I just gotta get this to, man, I haven't been putting down here in a while. It's close, but it was a little bit to the right. It's like a hair. Oh, there it is, there it is. All right. Got it. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that was like maybe a half ball to the right of uh, the dot. I'm sure you can see it in the camera. It's pretty easy to see in the video. All right, so we got this down now. Let's see if we can make another one. Getting the speed down, getting the aim down. That was a tad more to the right than the last one. 
and I left it just a little short, but notice it's a, just a little bit right of the cup and just a tiny bit short. So I feel like once you get used to your speed, like I said, I have it at 11 right now, um, and your aim, you're good. That was a decent pot. Yeah, missed it just a tiny bit. But I feel like for being on a rough surface that I'm on, I mean, you guys will have to let me know what you think, uh, for not having that optimal, you know, putting mat, giving the ball the opportunity to roll nice and smooth without any bouncing, uh, this, is, this is some pretty good performance. I snuck it in there. I don't know if you noticed, but that was like, like once again, like a like a half a ball or, or maybe a, a ball to the right. So, I mean, making a 20 foot putt with my ball bouncing and everything, um, this is, uh, this is decent. I'll tell you what, this is really good. Let's see if I can like kind of, maybe I'm just going to manipulate this just a little bit. I want to purposely leave it short. Okay. So you can definitely feel the speed there. So I like purposely wanted to leave that one just a little bit short and I purposely left it a little bit short. So um, I'm getting used to the roll now. Like I said, set at 11. Sometimes I was playing at 10 there for a while. Um, I just feel like 11 is a little more realistic for my turf. That one might be a little left, yeah. Man, that was so close. I mean, if you if you watch that roll, roll, it was like half ball or ball to the left, and that's exactly what it did there. So I think there's, I mean, obviously plenty of demonstrations. Um, what did it miss one time? I want to say. Uh, I mean, I feel like they've they've really done another great job updating the firmware here. A driver was very important, I know, to a lot of people. And if you noticed what I just did out there, those low spins, um, drastically different than what I was seeing before. I mean, I was seeing closer to 3,000, even sometimes 3,700 on random shots. And, uh, you know, if I'm making good contact, my ball's close to 2,000. And during one of the practice shots that I hit, I think it was like 1,900. Um, you noticed it was like 21 or 22. Uh, so um, good update that I'm seeing here. And then, you know, what's interesting is, is they have the new fusion tracking coming and then along with all the club data. So I'm very excited to be showing that in the channel when that gets released, they're talking about January. So stay tuned. We'll make sure to bring all that, you know, to the channel and demonstrate it all for you guys. If you guys want to see anything else, make sure you let me know. I mean, I'm just diving into this. So I've been busy. Um, I updated this literally like 30 minutes ago, messed around with it really quick and figured we'd knock out a quick video to show you guys some demonstrations. So um, there it is, FlightScope Mevo Plus, the new 0.19 firmware update. That's the DSP firmware. Comment below, let me know what you think and stay tuned. We'll bring you guys more soon.